Hi everyone this is Jason Zack from Nathaniel School of Music in this year training lesson we are going to figure out how you can identify intervals with respect to your chords as well as their inversions so when you learn intervals you are going to need to learn them with respect to first of all obviously the root or the key of the scale or the song you are playing in so that means if you take if this is your root let's say d flat then all your intervals will be computed or calibrated with respect to in this case c sharp also known as d flat so if you're singing la la that's a perfect fifth major third tri major set ah so if this is your root d flat you'll have all your intervals which you have to figure out by singing and by uh, by listening perfect fifth that's an a flat maybe a major third that's an f major second that's an e flat then maybe a seventh major seventh sa ni maybe an octave sa sa maybe a fourth sa ma ga major third sa ga minor third komal ga sa ga then you have a minor second sa re little tricky and then you to sing sa re flat two and then you have your tritone sa ma tritone and then you have your major sixth sa dha that's a b flat with respect to d flat sa dha and then minor six sa dha So that's one way of looking at intervals with respect to the tonic or the root of the song. Now this is also how a lot of traditional Indian musicians practice music with a traditional tanpura or sometimes an app is used to give you the the swaras the important swaras of the raga which is usually the sa and the pa the root and the fifth. Now intervals should also be learnt or recognized with respect to the previous or the next note. So if you take a note like e and now i play some kind of a tune na 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 now sa ga ma now that's a ma with respect to this sa na 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 but this is also the very next note with respect to the previous note so when you're learning intervals it it's sometimes very important to know or acknowledge that note with respect to the previous note or the next note with respect to the previous or that note with respect to the next note which so maybe you're able to figure out the previous or the next note and that will help you get the current note or the note of interest now in this lesson we are going to focus on intervals with respect to a chord so you play a chord and you need to figure out what is the middle note what is the top note what's the first note a chord generally has three notes sometimes it could have four So we are going to try and figure out even though the chord is pressed together you're not doing it one by one we still have to find a way to isolate this so you need to be a bit patient stay tuned till the very end you can also pause the video to kind of grasp a few things and the other topics the other ways of figuring out intervals not only by ear but also the detailed theory behind them can be found on our youtube channel itself we link up a few videos for interval recognition and you might want to also consider doing a regular structured semester at our school over 6 months you'll have weekly lessons to build this sort of knowledge wherein anyone plays a chord and you should know that it's d flat major 7th and then maybe you know b dominant 7th so you hear that chord and you need to know exactly what it is you need to know what the notes are you need to sing the notes so all of that might not be possible in a lesson like this you'll have to join one of our courses so do consider that uh, we leave you a, a link in the description and before we get started it'll be nice if you can consider uh, getting my handwritten notes on our patreon page for just 5 bucks a month not only for this lesson but all the stuff we have ever done and Also don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications. A great time to do that would be actually right now. This is the best time. So 
rest. Thank you. Let's get cracking. So first off, let's just look at how you build basic triads. This is more going to be more theoretical. So if you, for a short while, then we'll get to the ear training. So if you take all your F triads, let's take F major, F A C. Now, if you analyze the chord, how many intervals are there? Now, this may be a rather tricky one to answer. How many intervals are there in this triad? In other words, how many sounds is your ear or your brain processing? Well, for a two-note chord, if it were just F A or F C, your ear is just processing one sound. Now, you may be thinking, what is this? Am I not hearing F and C? Yeah, but you're hearing two notes, but two notes are combining together to produce one musical sound or musical emotion or thought for your brain. So F and C is one sound in my opinion. So, or one interval, that's the official way. And this is an interval of the fifth. If you take F to A, this is an interval of the third. Now, if you take an F major chord, Yes, you have the same interval of the third, F to A. That would be F A. Then you have the fifth, F C. But also, you'll have A to the C. You have an A to the C because you have one, three, one, five. What about three, five? So three to five is also there. For any three note chord, you're going to have three intervals. So F A, that's a major third. Then A, C, that's a minor third. And then F, C, that's the wider jump. That's a perfect fifth, which will have seven chromatic steps or seven semitones. Now, this is just for the root position of F major. It's the same when we build other chords. So if you take F minor, F minor is F, A flat, C, right? Now, what are the intervals? You'll have F to A flat, which is a minor third. Then A flat to C, which is a major third. And then F to C, Sa, Pa. So three intervals again. So for any three note triad, you, there, there shall be three intervals or three sounds. So F major has F, A, A, C, F, C. And F minor has F, A flat, A flat, C, F, C. And now coming to the more trickier, rarer triads, diminished maybe. F diminished. What's that? That's a minor third to a, F to A flat. And then another minor third from A flat to C flat, also known as B, but officially C flat. La, da, da, da. So that forms a tritone, tritone between the root and the fifth, also called as a diminished fifth. So that's the ecosystem of a diminished chord. Then we have another triad. That's called the augmented triad. F A which is a major third and another major third A C sharp which is now going to become an augmented fifth between the F C sharp Sa, pa. it's a bit awkward to call that a pa because usually a pa is the perfect fifth in Indian music but this is officially an augmented fifth so augmented fifth C sharp diminished fifth C flat also known as B that will form the diminished and the augmented triads and then we have the suspensions you have sus2 that's one major second perfect fifth but also note between the major second and the fifth G C is the perfect fourth F to G would be the F G major second so major second perfect fourth and perfect fifth and similar for a sus four that's sama pa that'll be root perfect fourth root perfect fifth and then ma pa ma to pa will be a major second okay so all of your triads can be visualized a lot better because you can figure out if the triad is stable unstable symmetric or asymmetric so if you take a major chord or a minor chord it is tilted in the direction of the major third which is the greater interval so it's not an unstable chord where the weights are hanging in the balance like a diminished chord now the reason why 
the diminished chord sounds a bit uncertain is because the intervals are the same minor third minor third same thing with an augmented chord major third major third so if you look at it as a weight principle the major third major third are the same so they are it's like the two weights are equal they're hanging in the balance so the same thing with the minor thirds they are also hanging in the balance while a major third and a minor third are not hanging in the balance it's major third this side minor third that side for major chord and the other thing gets reversed for the minor so they are stable in that sense because the weights balance so that was about triads so in conclusion for a two note chord you'll get one sound just that interval for a three note chord you'll get three sounds for a four note chord now we haven't discussed that for a four note chord how many sounds will that be so if you take an f dominant seventh now you might think oh four note chord possibly has four sounds but no you'll have this to this 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 and that to that so that's six sounds so you can remember this with with combinations you you're picking two you you're choosing two because your intervals have two notes that's what your ear is processing so based on the number of notes per chord so if a chord has now uh four notes you can consider this to be 4c2 combinations permutations and combinations you remember your maths class from i don't know which 8th standard 9th standard i don't know yeah so 4c2 so what will that be 4 factorial divided by 2 factorial into uh, 4 minus 2 so that that will equal to 6 so we'll just share some maths as a uh, pictures these pictures did not come from me i am not a maths teacher uh, chat gpt is my maths teacher so you can check that out so it will help you form even a five note chord so for a five note chord the beauty of that is you will have five c2 options you will have five c2 sounds that the ear is processing five c2 will be five factorial by two factorial into five minus two which is three factorial so what will that end up being that will be 10 so if you play a five note chord you're going to hear or feel 10 sounds if you play a four note chord you're going to hear or feel six sounds your brain is going to process six things if you hear a three note chord it's three so it's not just based on the number of chords it's based on the number of intervals that's why you need to use the combinations formula okay or you can just go by visual just look at it color it differently and you should get the answer right so that was a bit of the maths we went a bit off topic but i wanted to just show you the the value of what you're processing through your ears and your brain your, a four note chord is not just four notes it's six intervals a five note chord is not just five notes it's 10 intervals now we mentioned at the beginning of the lesson that this will be a ear training exercise to detect the notes of a chord so i'm going to come back to that i'm going to give you exercises so hang around get your keyboards out if you haven't already and you will have to sing along with me most of these ear training exercises need you to sing and i don't want to just stick with the root positions of the chords which are there in all of your traditional ear training apps and whatever actually ear training is not taught that much if you ask me come to think of it so i'm going to consider all of the inversions of the triad and i'd like to take two triads i'd like i'd like to take a major triad as well as a minor triad for major let's take f major so it's f major for the minor we are going to take c minor c minor So the first thing you want to do is plot out your inversions of each of these chords. So if you take F major, the first thing I'd encourage you to do is write them in a neat circle, F A C. So you'll easily visualize what are the inversions. F A C would be root position, A C F would be first inversion, and C F A would be second inversion. So if you look at F A C, the first thing you would want to do is look look at it it's starting on the root so you need to sing the root but before that you'll acknowledge that it's easier to sing the topmost note namely the c so ah the higher frequency is always easier so start with that la 
but that's not the root la what's the bottom ah don't forget the f so good way to help you also know the root you got the top that's pretty obvious but where's the root we don't know so play the root reinforce it with an octave in the bass so now try to take your mind off that high c and a trick i have for you would be to just stop singing and stop thinking for about just about 3 seconds just forget about just go do something else come back and let your brain kind of uh, refresh itself so otherwise you will be stuck on that c up top which can become a kind of a, a virus sometimes so forgetting that and now i'm trying to hear the bottom note f to reinforce it play it with octaves uh so the top note uh, uh now again the ecosystem of this major chord would be major third minor third perfect fifth so that's what you want to practice next saga that's 1 3 that's 3 5 ga pa you can call it ga pa because with respect to f that is the ga right a is the ga p c is the pa and then sa pa sa pa so sa ga ga pa sa pa these are the three intervals you have to practice singing sing along with me again sa get your root now sa ga sa ga now ga pa ga pa now sa pa sa pa so what do you do for the inversion as i've written it in the circle you'll have fac you can have acf i choose not to play it so high so maybe here so first of all hear the cluster of these three notes and what does it do to the ear what, which note is your ear going to sing more often than not it will sing the topmost note ah wait for 2 to 3 seconds for your ear to process ah that's the top note so the, the notes now are a c f now the root is up top you can also reinforce it uh, and get it down okay another nice thing to do now is to train your ear you've got the top note uh, now train your ear for the bottom note so reinforce it by playing it again copying it in the bass ah uh, that's the bass and then remove it ah uh, that's the top ah uh, that's the bass so you you may not have got the middle note just now of this chord but you've got the bottom you've got the top you got the bottom by reinforcing the bass as i call it you've got the top by singing what's obviously right up there it's right up top so now see if you can continue to sing the top with the a bass and now shift to a bass a bottom okay now let's isolate the chord this is g pa sa a c f so g pa sing that first that will be a minor third so the in intervals change as we've inverted it g pa g pa will be a minor third no a to c g pa and then pa sa right that's the perfect fourth so we never got that for the root position so that's the beauty of inversions they offer a different perspective to the same triad so ga pa ga is 3 in indian music pa is 5 so just saying it voicing it out with these otherwise i can even say a c c f so that's ga pa which will be a minor third 
which will be a perfect fourth and then you have a beautiful minor sixth interval between the g and the higher sa ng sa ng sa ng sa this is your root sa ga ga sa ng sa ng sa so the intervals you have to practice are again i could perhaps continue playing the f bass and work on ng pa pa sa ng sa this is the first inversion practice ng pa pa sa ng sa now you try it practice it a bit ng do do ga pa ga pa now do pa sa let's see f pa sa now do ga and the higher sa ng sa and to reinforce the lowest note you would play it actually as a slash chord so when you don't change the bass it's just called as an inversion because it's assumed that you you're just going to play the traditional old root f major root but if you're playing it with a a bass you'll have to actually write it as a slash chord f forward slash a would be the description right so that's the first inversion practice now what about the second inversion second inversion a cheat code would be start on the fifth of the chord or again if you've written it in that circle you have f a c a c f and now c f a so c f a so first of all let's go through the same motion process get the top note wait let it resonate always encourage you to sing it without actually singing it so sing it just with your silent voice just sing it internally depending on which octave don't get don't think that oh i have to go to that really high note i can also go so you don't have to hear that note so high and sing it so high you can hear it at this pitch and sing it at your pitch or at this pitch or at that pitch so that's your highest note seems pretty obvious so that one you'll get now the bottom how do you reinforce it you want to play the bottom note what is this this is c so wax c now realign your brain just focus on the bass earlier you focused on the top sing it inside and then outside because if you sing it outside you've committed to the answer so whatever you sing out will be your your brain will just believe it's right which it may not be uh, that's the bass uh, and now come back to the uh, uh, higher note of the second inversion lower note of the second inversion of course f is in the middle here the root is in the middle ah. and now let's observe it intervalically again you have some very different intervals so da 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 so pa sa pa sa so you have that that old lang syne interval uh, for both the first and the second inversion so sa and then sa ga on the top sa ga pa sa c f f a and then a beautiful major 6th with the extremes that's c a c a c a pa ga pa ga will be the extreme intervals and the sa is in the middle pa is in the bottom ga is on the top pa sa ga pa sa ga so let's rewind to the root position sa ga pa root position ga pa sa first inversion 
pasada second inversion okay if you don't want to use swaras just do la 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 f a c i would i would encourage using the swaras because it will tell you you know sa means one ga means three pa means five so it's a good way to cultivate or to get the brain to figure out exactly what interval it is also with respect to the root of the scale or the root of the chord what if you have to change then you'll know that this is important rather than just singing na 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 la 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 and other such things which are not going to test your theoretical knowledge so much they may train your ear Uh, but it may not train your theory that much so now let's move on to some exercises to help you hear all of this better and to practice this not only with a piano or a guitar but anywhere you go you could be walking in a park or you could be in a flight actually singing this in flight and not disturbing your neighbor because you can practice this internally in your mind itself you know so i'm going to give you those exercises let's move forward so i have four arpeggio patterns for you that i that i also do when i practice uh, ear training so let's go through them and it's going to be written as l m and h where l is the low note of the thing you're singing the lowest pitch m is the middle pitch h is the high pitch so exercise 1 will be l m h m l l m h m l so 1 and 2 and 3 4 1 and 2 so low middle high middle low okay now if i put this into practice with the chord so first identify your notes i'm in root position so sa ga pa sa is the low ga is the middle pa is the top so l m h m l or better still just sing the swaras sa ga pa ga sa sa ga pa ga sa now you may get this easily perhaps if you are at that level here's what i would encourage you to do sa ga pa ga sa don't do the sa at the original state whatever octave it is in sing it the other octave so sa ga pa ga sa not so low that will be a bit weird sa ga pa ga sa that's original sa ga pa ga sa again sa ga pa ga sa or 1 3 5 3 octave 1 3 5 3 1 Okay let's move on to arpeggio pattern 2 which will be L H M H L L H M H L so sa pa ga pa sa let's do that sa pa ga pa sa sa pa ga pa sa sa pa ga pa sa so sa ga pa ga sa sa pa ga pa sa these are the two arpeggios sa pa ga pa l h m h l okay very piano like arpeggios come to think of it now i keep the same shape and now i want to change the arpeggio to just the reverse of l m h m uh, to do h m l m h just the reverse l m h m l h m l m h reverse right inverted one is mountain shape one is the other is v shape so h m l m h pa ga sa ga pa pa ga sa ga pa i like to do the pa one octave below if you're a bit more advanced pa ga sa ga pa pa ga sa you're comfortable with so pa ga sa ga pa so that's h m l m h now let's do h l m l h pa sa ga sa pa pa sa ga sa pa pa 
And yes, having the chord play is a kind of a convenience if you think about it. But try to remove it when you're maybe walking in a park. You you could just sing. You should have the the chord in your brain. La la la. You know, it's all in my head. So yes, you may want a reference note, or maybe not. Who cares about the reference note? I'm I'm showing you this on a major chord. It should, in principle, work for any other major chord. Sa pa ga pa sa, sa pa ga pa sa, sa pa ga pa sa. The the flavor of the chord remains the same. The intervals will thus remain the same. So it's not going to be very important that you always have to start on a specific root. This is a relative pitch that we are training, not perfect pitch. So in this situation where you're walking your dog in a park and you just want to hum something, you go la la la. That's your major chord, and then practice the drills. La 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 la, L M H M L, Sa Sa G P G Sa, then Sa P G P Sa, then P G Sa G P, P Sa G Sa P versus P Sa G Sa P Sa. Okay. Now you can take this exercise a lot more further by by just continuing the process with the inversions. So if you take The first inversion, you first of all could play it, which will be ga pa sa. So ga would be the the low, pa would be the middle, sa would be the high. Now earlier sa was the low, so now if you do ga pa sa in L M H M L, ga pa sa pa ga, ga pa sa pa ga, ga sa pa sa. That'll be L H M H. Ga sa pa sa ga, and then sa pa ga pa sa, sa ga pa ga sa. And then, of course, you can do the second inversion, which starts with C, and then pa sa ga. Realign L M H L will now be pa M M will be the sa H. <coughs> L will now be the pa C M will be the F which is the sa pa sa and then G will be the H so pa sa G sa pa L M H M then L H M H L pa G sa G pa pa G sa is in the middle pa G sa G pa now this will really test it's getting to now training the knowledge of the swaras really well you you have to really know what the pa is what the fifth or the third is when you sing so and then you have high middle low middle high ga sa pa sa ga ga sa pa sa ga and then ga pa high low middle low high ga pa sa pa ga ga pa sa pa ga sa that's your root okay and before we conclude the ear training lesson i said that we'll take two chords so we'll very quickly just discover all of these options on one minor chord so we've taken f major let's also do c minor so this is c minor so same old story c minor all the three positions c minor that's your root first inversion second inversion same story practice singing all of the stuff of the root position and then the root by reinforcing the bottom then you go the la 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 first inversion roots on the top right now reinforce the bottom and then a second inversion la 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 on the top 
ಅದ ರೀಎನ್ಫೋರ್ಸ್ ದ ರೂಟ್ देयर वी गो सो लेट्स पुट दिस इनटू प्रैक्टिस विद ऑल ऑफ आवर अपेजियो पैटर्न्स फर्स्ट ऑफ एल एम एच एम एल स ग प ग स स ग प ग स इफ यू वांट टू डू इट हायर स ग प ग स प स ग प ग स देन एल एच एम एच एल स प ग प स स प ग प स देन हाई मिडिल लो मिडिल हाई प ग स ग प p g s g p if you want to do the lower pa p g s g p p g s g p and then finally p s g s p p s g s p and with all of this you are not allowed to do it's obviously cheating so you don't want to do that just hold the chord and actually eventually don't hold anything you should like i said be in a flight and practice this or you know just be in just doing a daily walk and you should just whenever you have some time on your hands you know to do just work on music you can pra- always practice ear training and rhythm in my opinion a lot of people think music practice is practicing piano or guitar reading some sheet music and uh, you know mugging up some stuff that's not music practice it's probably 20 to 25% of what you should practice i would i would argue that listening to music is very crucial i would argue that ear training is very crucial i would argue that being better at rhythm all of these things make you a better player make you a better composer and a better musician so ear training we have covered it for chords with inversions how to hear every chord tone with intervals we looked at a bit of theory as well so do go through the video in detail get my notes on patreon that will help you understand the exercises a bit more and uh, we've done a lot of ear training videos on our channel we've put it in a playlist called ear training so do check that out and like i said at the beginning of the video if you want to do a regular semester you can come over and join our school for an online 6 month semester or however long you want to learn we can keep teaching you ear training thanks a ton for watching the video catch you in the next one cheers